Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now August 4th of 2020. Here we are midway through this year until we reach 2021 next year, which is when the new Star Wars universe is really going to become a big thing by Disney, Lucasfilm, Bob Iger, Bob Chapek, you name it. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, the one thing about Disney Star Wars is that we do know that they are currently in a phase of damage control to really get the ball rolling again when it comes to Star Wars. Essentially, what they really want to do is that they want to bring it to the same exact level as the Marvel Cinematic Universe to really have two successful franchises on their plate to really bring the franchise into a different level of success. Now, the thing about all of this is that, yes, we do know that Chapek and Iger are really doing everything in their power to really make Star Wars pretty much, you know, exciting again for the Star Wars fandom, to really have a lot of Star Wars fans out there very excited about the future of the franchise and exactly where it's all going. Now, given that Kathleen Kennedy no longer has creative control over a majority of the Star Wars projects, except for the Leslie Headland Star Wars TV series, a lot of fans are still very much, you know, curious about exactly what's going to come out of Lucasfilm and Disney, regardless of Kathleen Kennedy no longer being involved, for the most part. Now, with that being said, of course, you know, a lot of change is being made over at Lucasfilm. Bob Chapek is creating a major facelift over at Lucasfilm by promoting creatives and even hiring new creators like, of course, you know, Steven Spielberg as an executive producer for a handful of TV shows and having other people come on board as well. Now, with that being said, what's really intriguing involves actor Adam Driver, where now that both Disney and Lucasfilm are finished with the Skywalker saga, they are focused on developing a new Star Wars universe for the fans to enjoy around the world. It's explained that currently both Bob Chapek and Bob Iger are making many changes over at Lucasfilm in order to satisfy the Star Wars fandom overall. Now, it's described, however, that before and after the Rise of Skywalker premiere, many interviews were given to the creators and actors of the sequel trilogy, where it's described that at one point in time, actor Adam Driver was questioned about Kathleen Kennedy's leadership over at Lucasfilm and the general backlash over The Last Jedi as a movie by director Ryan Johnson. Adam Driver went on to apologize to fans by saying how he was sorry for at one point in time stating that the backlash over Luke Skywalker was just a, ni a minority and nothing to really worry about, and that looking back at what he said now is that he realizes that a large portion of the fan base are just passionate fans who were voicing their own opinions over Luke Skywalker, in which that's completely right. Now, it's described that Adam Driver also apologized over himself refusing to voice his opinions over The Last Jedi and what he thought about the movie and went on to say that the film was a polarizing movie that created mixed emotions among Star Wars fans and that he had never seen such a thing with The Force Awakens or Rogue One and that he was surprised about the reaction. Adam Driver went on to state that he was sorry for not being as vocal as he should have been with The Last Jedi as he wasn't quite sure about how he felt about the movie at the time during the promotion of it all. So here's the thing about The Last Jedi, alright? <clears throat> now this movie did in fact have a lot of problems with it. I think that the main thing that a lot of fans did not like was how Luke was handled, how Snoke was handled, the absence of the Knights of Ren, and other canon lore that was drastically changed by Ryan Johnson in The Last Jedi. You know, let's not also forget that Luke tossed the saber over the cliff. I mean, all these different things. The Casino City of Canto Bight as a useless plot. Really just all this matched together. It just shows us that this movie was an epic failure. Now, some of you guys might like the movie, and that's fine. Everybody has their own opinions and their own feelings on movies. That's perfectly okay. You know, your opinion is welcome here below in the comments, so feel free to, you know, express yourself on that. But the thing about The Last Jedi, when we look back at what Adam Driver did with his performance in, you know, that movie, I really do feel that in The Force Awakens, at least in my opinion, he had a better performance in that movie than how he did in The Last Jedi. That's just how I felt on things here. Looking at The Rise of Skywalker, I really do feel that Adam Driver really topped his performance as Kylo Ren slash Ben Solo because he had a lot more screen time, if you will, between, you know, being unmasked and masked, you know, combined. 
Now, when we look at everything else related to Adam Driver of how he apologized for, you know, not voicing his opinions on The Last Jedi and being very silent and even at one point in time calling, you know, the people that criticized Luke's death and all uh, were just a minority and how he actually realizes that it's not a minority, it's a large chunk of the Star Wars fan base that is very passionate and very much, you know, vocal about their opinions, and that's completely right. So, like I've said before in the past, guys, you know, let me know what you think about the entire scenario here, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.